Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 12 of season 6 of the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. Five races to go of this entire series and if you guys missed out on the Belgian Grand Prix last time round, definitely, definitely, definitely uh, go back and check it out. There will be spoilers in just a moment though but heading to the Italian Grand Prix this weekend... We need a big result. We need big results. We need no mistakes between now and the end of the year. Spoilers, of course, in three, two, one, now. So, heading to the uh, the Italian Grand Prix. Six cars separated by 14 points at this stage of the year. There, The top three separated by just two points as well. Constructors-wise, we're not looking great at this stage of the year. They're 63 points off Mercedes and about, what's that, 38 behind Alpha Tauri. As well, so things not looking perfect in that as well. A 28 point, sorry, off Alpha Tari as well. There, but Monza has historically been a brilliant track for ourselves here on F1 2020. So, we're going to buckle down, we're going to head into it, and hopefully, we're going to walk away with maybe our second win of the year. I don't know just yet. We, we need big results, we need consistent results. There's so many drivers within a shot still. Just being consistent between now and the end of the year will probably put you in really, really good stead. Right, so here we are then qualifying for the Italian Grand Prix, and I forgot to mention at the start of the video. If you aren't already, please do make sure you get yourself subscribed to the channel. At the time we're recording this, we're about 20 subscribers away now from 15,000 on the channel. We, we might hit it. I'm, I'm recording a bit ahead at the moment, so if we have hit it, a massive, massive thank you to all of you guys for the continued support. If you look down below and it still says 14.9k... Make sure, make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Just try and help us get one step closer to the goal here. We're trying to hit 15,000 before F1 2021 releases in just a... Well, by, by the time this video goes live, just over a week's time, if I'm not mistaken. It really has crept up on us rather quickly here. And we've, of course, still got a few more races to go of the My Team Career Mode as well, of course. But yeah, still loving this game as well. But we're at in Q2 of the Italian Grand Prix. Times are fast, though. People are already down into the 115s. 3.6 miles in 75 seconds. Bearing in mind those corners, there's some slow chicanes around here as well. It, it's ridiculous just how quick these Formula 1 cars are now. That being said, our car does look like it's going to be one of the fastest this weekend as well, of course. Running quite a low aero setup around this track, understandably. Mercedes don't seem to have a particularly brilliant face. Uh, but anyway, down towards the line... A 16.6 on mediums. Not a particularly brilliant banker, but certainly not bad. We've had too many bad Q2s over the course of this season. I'm not even going to bother risking it. We're just going to go straight out for a run on the soft compound tyres here. As we head around through with Parabolica once more. Yeah, we, we just have no risks can be taken between now and the end of the year. Rather than trying to go for last-ditch attempts at the end of sessions, now it's all about just trying to make sure we have the lap in place. Nice and early on there. Five races to go of the year. And there is still a lot to play for. A lot can change between now and the end of the year. As well, I think we got the car slowed down too well into turn one there somehow. Tell you what, we need a ninth gear here. In the Italian Grand Prix, there are so many places where we're max now eighth there at about 225 miles an hour. This thing is a rocket ship down the straights there, but we're about six tenths up as we come towards the end of our second run here. Like I said, top guy's already down into the 15s there. We're about to dip into the 15s as well as we head out of the final corner there. It's going to be a 5967 that puts us 22 thousandths off Luca Giotto. Remember as well, this is his first home Grand Prix. He will want to win here today. Right, have we got any big surprises out in Q2? Lewis Hamilton out in Q2. For the Grand Prix here today. Then no other major surprises. It looks like Alpha Tower is struggling a little bit this weekend there as well. But yeah, the Mercedes man out in qualifying two for the Grand Prix there. Only six cents off his teammate Luca Giotto in the end there. But yeah, we look quick. Mercedes, well, Luca Giotto looks quick there. Ferrari and Red Bull, as well as Racing Point, all look really, really on it this weekend as well. There's a lot to play for. We can't afford any mistakes in our Q3 run. I'm not mistaken, we still have not claimed a pole position at any point over the course of the year so far, so definitely feel like we're owed one 
in this Grand Prix here today. Round in the final corner then to start our first Q3 run. I think if we get everything hooked up, a 15-6 could be possible here as long as we don't overdrive the car. Maybe if we try and get close enough to the Alpha Tower, we can get a bit of a faint draft down towards the end of the lap as well. They're at 224 miles an hour as you slam on the anchors at the 100 meter board down in towards turn one. They're 50 miles an hour, even slower than that through the second part. So you try to avoid the wheel spin on the exit there under the little Pirelli gantry as you now head through Curva Grande. Try and just give yourself the shortest run up in towards the next chicane. They'll want to be braking just at the 100 board once more. Really trying to attack as much of the orange curb on the way in and on the way out there. Avoid the gravel, though, on at the outside. Down a couple of gears in towards the first of the Lesmos there. Briefly down into fourth before back up into fifth. Then just at about 65 metres for the second one there. Again, back up the gears as you head down the next straightaway here. Used to be one of the fastest parts of the track. It's still certainly not very slow at all there. Again, 223, 224 miles an hour as you slam the anchors at the 100 board for Ascari. Take a lot of curb on the way in and on the way out there as you want to use all of that road on the outside. Down in towards the final corner then. The lap's been pretty good so far. Breaking sure you break just before the 50 meter ball there. Try and get as close to the grass as you can on the inside. Power out of the final corner. Short, it's run to the line. What's it going to be? It's going to be a 1.15.6. So I was bang on then. I thought 15.6 was going to be possible. And our first lap is going to be a 15.6. We're going to need sweat mode on the second run. To see if we can go any quicker. Well, second run then is going to have to be a bit of an all or nothing style lap here. As you can see, everyone else incredibly quick though. I think Leclerc in P2, as well as Kvyat and Russell, they're all on a 15.7 at this stage of the day. So yeah, we're going to have to absolutely nail this lap. Concentration is going to be key. Making sure we make no mistakes as well. There no lockups, anything like that. Any mistake, we're not going to be able to improve here. That lap, first lap was pretty damn good. Breaking down in towards turn one. Oh, really chucked it in on the way in. Can we get the power down on the way out there? Just a little bit of wheel spin as we got the outside wheels on the curbing there. Back through Curve Grande once more. I'm a bit worried we might get caught up behind Danny Kvyat on this run. But we'll wait and see. That was a better run than the first time around there. We find a bit more time back through there. As you chuck it through the first Lesmo. the second one as well. Oh, really getting up towards the gravel that time around. It's compromised our run on the exit. We're pretty much going to be even Stevens as we head down in towards Ascari here. That was a bit of a mistake last time round. Oh, that's that's a bit cheeky through there. We haven't really gained anything from it, I don't think. Half a tenth at most. But down in towards the final corner then. We might be now getting a bit of a toe from Danny Kvyat here as we head in towards the final corner. Sorry, it's Pierre Gasly there. And no, we've completely missed the turning in point. And we're not going to improve on our second run then unless we get a big old slipstream, which we're not going to get up towards the line. It's a tenth off, but it's still good enough for pole position here. Fantastic. Our first pole position of the year, and it couldn't have come at a better time here in the Italian Grand Prix. One thousandth of a second. Leclerc managed to get P2 in that qualifying session. We almost saw a Jerez 1997 there. Two cars tied just behind him, Danny Kvyat and George Russell there, P1 and P3 in your World Championship there. Pierre Gasly still very much in the mix, so both Alpha Towers then in the end were a lot quicker in that Q3 run than we expected them to be. Their Giotto must be kicking himself down on a 16-4 in the end. They're behind both of the racing points with Ocon and Raikkonen rounding out your top 10. But it is all still to play for here in the Italian Grand Prix. It's meant to be dry though, we've been gifted a dry weekend. Can we try it and go pole to race victory? We're back in Italy once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. And what a great race is in store for us today here at the oldest circuit on the calendar. Monza hosted its first race all the way back in 1922. We're 12 miles northeast of Milan for today's Grand Prix at a Monza circuit where we can expect top speeds of around 215 miles per hour. 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track with seven of those coming in the form of chicanes and with a good slipstream and DRS open, there should be plenty of opportunity for some passing here today. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances, but what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another great race today. 
It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Mr Monaco lines up on pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Fiat, Russell, Pierre Gasly and Joe. Stroll, Giotto, Ocon, and Kimi Raikkonen, Hamilton, Albon, Sergio Perez, and Verstappen, Giovinazzi, Norris, Carlos Sainz, and Nicholas Latifi, Magnussen, Matsushita, King, and Nick de Vries. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Five races remaining and you've still got a chance of winning the world driver's title. Let's grab a solid points finish. The team are bang on. Five races to go. I know I keep saying it. I, I just cannot believe we're really coming to the end here of F1 2020. But, like I said, the track is looking nice and sunny here today. We're not going to underfuel the car by much, of course, because pretty much the entirety of the Italian Grand Prix circuit is straightaways, but I'm hoping for a nice clear race at the front. We don't want any safety cars, any intervention at all. We want a nice clean Grand Prix here today, but this track stresses the engine like no other, so things could certainly get interesting nonetheless. So let's dive in then here, ready for the Italian Grand Prix round 12 of the year here. We've got our teammate Charles Leclerc alongside us on the front row. It's five red lights, and it's lights out, and away we go. Oh, again, a lot of wheel spin off the launch. And Charles Leclerc there is going to pounce on that opportunity down in towards turn one. The same can be said for Danny Kvyat. Everyone trying to go for it. Then look at George Russell. That's a questionable move from George Russell, but he's pulled it off up into the lead of the Grand Prix there. That goes to show George Russell's intent at this stage of the year there. So he goes from fourth to first. We go the other way there. First to fourth as we're side by side with Guan Yu Zhou. Down in towards the second chicane there. Guan Yu Zhou trying to hold it up the inside. But we'll be later on the brakes. They have the inside for the second part of the corner. And we will hold on to P4 of the Grand Prix. But yeah, if ever, ever there was a sign that George Russell was throwing, literally throwing everything at this. Throwing his Ferrari car in towards turn one is, is probably the biggest statement of intent I think George Russell could make at this stage of the year. Their Ferrari lead... The Italian Grand Prix here, and I don't think they've ever actually won this race in this career mode as well, of course. I think we won it season one, I want to say. We took a shot race victory here, if I remember correctly. And then since then, yeah, Ferrari just haven't had a car capable of really winning races for much longer after that. But yeah, at the final corner, though, George Russell fourth to first. Uh, uh, Leclerc and Kvyat holding on to their track position there. And yeah, like I said, we go from first down to fourth. Heading back into T1, though, already. Leclerc and Kvyat going side by side. Let's see if Leclerc's got some race pace this weekend there as he tries to hold on around the outside of Danny Kvyat there. The Alpha Tauri man knows he has got a big, big shot at the World Championship. He's been one of the most consistent performers so far this year. And after taking his debut victory in Formula 1 last time out, there was a big lockup from Charles Leclerc there. He knows now the momentum is with him at this stage of the year. We're getting a bit closer, though, to both of these guys. Maybe with some DRS, we can try and make something work. But you can see, as we come towards the end of lap three, though, the top four in this Grand Prix have bolted away from the rest of the field. They're already a three-second gap back to Pierre Gasly after just three la racing laps here. But Gaviat, again, having a look down around the outside of our teammate Charles Leclerc, back through turn one there. This time around, he gets a lot more of the car alongside. And we try and get a run on the X there. Big kick of wheel spin in fourth gear they're lucky to keep that in a straight line but yeah still nothing working for us though was Kvyat still applying the pressure to Leclerc in front we can't let them battle too much and let Russell get away however Leclerc keeping DRS is keeping us all in this all right let's see if Kvyat goes for something again this time around or can we get a little bit closer to the pair of me 225 miles an hour they're 226 227 as we head down towards turn one but again Leclerc goes defensive we somehow find the room around the outside of Danny Kvyat this time round and have we just teamed up against him i been able to pull off the move there yes we have I'm in a P3 once more of the Grand Prix but Leclerc now pretty much a second ahead of us at this stage he's now going to try and give chase to George Russell here but yeah we're the only team with two cars in this battle so we surely need to work together here to try and make sure that A we get some good points in the Drivers Championship and thus both make some big gains in the Constructors here we go then, Leclerc on George Russell as we head back down towards turn one. 
Albon sets a new fast lap of the Grand Prix there, but Leclerc might have just done it in one go. On George Russell, though, they're still side by side as they head out of the first corner there. Russell always able to get the power down so easily in at that Ferrari there. A little bit of moving around from the pair of them, and I think Leclerc might just have to slot back there as Russell goes defensive. We might be able to have a look around the outside as we head down in towards the next chicane there. George Russell gets completely caught out over the inside curb there, and somehow we pulled off a move on our teammate Charles Leclerc. He's still going to try and come back at us, though, through the first Lesmo there, and we're going to bail out of that. We don't want to get him bottled in too much with our teammate here at the start of this Grand Prix. Potentially contact could be championship destroying for either of us at this stage of the year. There, The teams don't want us pitting in pretty standard time in this Grand Prix. Reckon we can just take these softs a little bit longer, but it'll all depend on what we're doing with the traffic. And already then, just because of all this battle in these last couple of laps, Gasly has brought himself up to this battle. Can we get another run? on our teammate Charles Leclerc as we head back down towards someone and we just got so much extra momentum we might be able to have a look at George Russell as well as we head back down in towards the first corner Russell tries to give us a squeeze We've got one of the Alpha Towers going for it oh big contact between myself and George Russell there have we got away with that without any damage we've got a little bit of front wing damage as Russell's going to get a big run on the exit of the corner there and look at this Kvyat trying to really get his nose involved once more here this is basically stock car racing at this stage of the days again Russell just gets caught out over that inside curve and for the first time since the start we now lead this Grand Prix there not for very long though Russell having a look back up the inside through the first Lesmo there but we do hold on and yeah like I said for the first time since being on the grid we now lead here in Italy can we however somehow pull away we watched Kvyat try and get a run there on George Russell like we're seeing can we get a big run through a scar to potentially pull away from the pair of them here? Kvyat, of course, wants to try and get his second race victory in Formula 1 there. And look at that straight away. The gap up to 1.2 seconds. So we made the move work at the perfect time. We left George Russell vulnerable there. we got Leclerc and Gasly battling out further back. And we have been given a lifeline here. Gasly is now also trying to have a look past George Russell here. So you can see Kvyat now has been given a bit of a lifeline up in P2 of the race there. He's now got two seconds to George Russell behind him there and still a very very feisty Frenchman applying the pressure so now yeah Kvyat and I have both got a golden opportunity to try and pull away in this race here but we're still only in the very very early days only eight laps in to this race it's just how much carnage we've already had at the start here in Monza but yeah a long long way to go oh Kvyat into the pits then very very early in this Grand Prix there same for George Russell as well, so not too sure what's going on there in this race. We're probably going to have to cover the undercut then from Danny Kvyat in this Grand Prix. Yeah, they're all in by the end of lap 9 here. So I reckon they're going on to hards to the end of this race. So that could be a huge strategy blunder from both Alfa Tauri and Ferrari here. Both Italian teams, both of course won a victory. But yeah, we still definitely think the mediums are the way to go second half of this race. Oh. Start lap 12, Gasly's into the pits as well then. Are we going to see Charles Leclerc in? No, I don't think we are. So Leclerc, therefore, is going to reclaim P2 in this Grand Prix. And oh, how I'd love to see him finish there in this race. As soon as I say that, Lance Stroll gets past him there. The underdog in this battle there. We haven't really seen much of Lance Stroll, I'll be honest, personally, over the course of this year. But he's been getting the big results in. And he has kept himself in this title battle, despite, of course, a DNF early on in the year. Had he finished the Dutch Grand Prix, he probably, yeah, no, he would be leading the title, I think, at this stage of the year there, by about three or four points. Probably even more than that, because obviously a lot of us would have lost out points. I don't think I've got as lucky as that on F1 2020 at any point on this game. Now we really need to worry about the undercut. We're probably going to have to box at the end of this lap there, but that's... <laughs> F1 2020 has left me speechless now twice in a row in these My Team videos there. Uh, but yeah, the tyres are certainly cooked at this stage of the day there, and a cheeky 360 for style points is not quite what I had in mind at this stage of the game. But anyway, let's head back down into the pit lane then. Make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidily. Oh, that was pretty much spot on in this Grand Prix. But no, why is Leclerc come in? Why? Why? Surely, surely, unless it's changeable conditions, coders need to put something in. That means your teammate won't double stack with you here. Are we going to hold on to the lead of the Grand Prix? Come on. 
two and a half second stop is particularly brilliant. The Alpha Tower is no. Look at that, both Alpha Towers are going to be able to get past us here as we head back out of the pit lane. So we have lost a lot from that mistake there. I know I'm sure they'd love to try and get a 1 2 in this Grand Prix as well. That would bring them much closer to Mercedes and, of course, home soil as well for Alpha Towery. But yeah, Kvyat's still on those hards though. We've got a chance against him, but we've got to get around Gasly first. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Who's going to retire from the Grand Prix? Is it Lance Stroll? No, it's his teammate, Guan Yu Zhou. Luckily not involved in the title battle here, but is that going to give us a safety car in this Italian Grand Prix there as we head out through Ascari once more? Big wobble from ourselves as there is Guan Yu Zhou out of the Grand Prix, and yes, it is a safety car has been deployed in this Grand Prix. And is it worth us pitting him for another set of softs? I think it's going to put us too far back in the pack, I'll be honest. But it's also now going to allow everyone else to close back in. Well, it hasn't been a long safety car here, but it is about to come back in with 12 racing laps to go. Hopefully, 12 racing laps to go here of the Italian Grand Prix. Kvyat still leads ahead of Gasly and myself, though, with Stroll and Ocon just behind us, but heading down in towards the final corner. Can Gasly repeat the same heroics we saw from him in real life 2020 here? Still got Stroll as well, who of course restarted that Grand Prix from effective pole position. But when is Kvyat going to go? We're going to try and guess it. We've not guessed it very well as we head back down to towards turn one, however. But we've got so much top end speed in this car, though. The same can be said for Alpha Tauri, of course. Gasly thinks about having a look at it on his teammate there, but look at that. Almost, almost a big, big crash between the Alpha Tauris down through turn one there. We've got yellow flags behind us. I'm sure someone else. Trying to make some big, big moves there. It looks like everyone, though, has made it back through the first corner clean and tidily here. But Kvyat, he's on a hard, harder, older rubber. He needs to try and hang on for as long as possible here. But Gasly and I are both going to be applying the pressure. I think Alpha Tauri are really trying to drag each other along at this stage of the day. There, so we might be under pressure from Lance Stroll as we head out onto lap 17 here. He's going to get right behind us. He's going to have a look to the inside there, but just doesn't quite have enough top end. As so we head back down towards turn one there. This thing can be set for uh, Gasly just in front of us. Now we need to try and get back close to these guys and make sure we're still within the DRS when it's enabled again next lap. Oh my, yeah, Lance Stroll this time around. Nothing we can do as we head out of the final corner there. Stroll, new fast lap of the Grand Prix as well with that lap there. As you can see, we just have so much extra top end speed though. The Mercedes power unit in at that racing point does not deliver enough right at the very top there. As now Gasly gets the run on Kvyat through the first couple of corners there as they head out into towards Curve Grande who is still going to be in the lead there Kvyat only just holds on this time round as now when he's trying to get close enough to these guys to really go for something there Stroll fastest lap bonus point that could be crucial come the end of the year as well of course but less than 10 laps to go now here from Monza and it's still anyone's guess as who's going to win this Right, are we going to see Gasly again try and go for something on Danny Kvyat as we head back down towards turn one? Of course, now with DRS, surely going to be a lot easier for one Alpha Tauri on the other here. But Kvyat is defending well at this stage of the Grand Prix. As soon as I say that, though, Gasly might just have got too big a run back down towards turn one here. What's Kvyat going to be able to do? He's still going to try and hook it up around the outside like we saw from him, but just gets a little bit over the curb through turn one there and that is going to give not only Gasly the lead of the Grand Prix but maybe us a bit of a lifeline as well there's down around the outside of Danny Kvyat as we head down in towards the next chicane there do not want to accidentally run into Pierre in front oh a big kick of oversteer on the exit but we're now up at a P2 of the Grand Prix but only for a brief moment there as Kvyat tries to have a look up the inside through the first Lesmo doesn't quite have the momentum though on the exit of the corner and yeah we are now up at a P2 of the Grand Prix another big kick of oversteer on the exit of the second Lesmo, though. That's just how hard we're pushing at this stage of the Grand Prix to try and hang on to these Alpha Tauris. Strolls now having a look on Danny Kvyat back down towards Turn 1 as they both get very, very close to me through those first big breaking zone of the lap there. But Kvyat hangs on this time around, though. The gap might open up to about a second, though, as we head out of Curva Grande there once more. And there we go, just nicks over that one second mark. So this very, very quickly could now become a battle between Pierre Gasly and myself as we make a horrible mistake through the second chicane. That's going to give Gasly a bit more breathing room. Gasly, new fast lap of the Grand Prix now. We're just seven to go. Clearly, yeah, Pierre still pushing. 
this really does feel like the real life 2020 Belgian Grand uh, sorry Italian Grand Prix at the moment though because we just can't seem to get back in the DRS of Pierre Gasly here if we can get within that one second mark I feel like we'll be able to get right up to him and potentially overtake him but with just six laps to go here it's yeah not looking great there we go. New fast lap of the Grand Prix. This is what we need. An 18-0 with just four laps to go here. And the gap to Pierre down to 1.3 again. Yes. Yes. With three laps to go, we've finally got some DRS on a Pierre Gasly here. Surely now we can try and get a bit closer and maybe look for a move. But we've still got to be absolutely on it between now and the end of the Grand Prix there. You can see it's seven tenths now the gap as we really smashed it through the first couple of chicanes this time round to get that gap down there. Kvyat's still in P3 trying to defend from Lance Stroll, but if we win this race, that could be a big swing in both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship, which is exactly what we need. Not going to be close enough to Gansi to get a run back down towards someone there, but a 17-7 in race trim is ridiculous. Right, one lap to go then here from the Italian Grand Prix. And the gap between Gasly and I, just half a second. Can we try and have another upset in the latter stages of these races? This time around, though, not for me, but hopefully for Pierre Gasly here. As we head on to the final lap of this Italian Grand Prix, it has been action from start to finish. And are we going to see one last twist there? Gasly has not got the run down towards him under. And look at that, he's got nothing left to defend with. As we head in towards the first corner there, we're a bit too deep through the corner there it's not going to allow us a particularly brilliant run on the exit of the corner there and is Gasly now going to try and come back at us as we head out through turn three there through Curva Grande once more though I just don't think he's got enough ERS in at that Alpha Tauri here and Pierre Gasly might not be able to repeat the feats we saw from the real life 2020 Italian Grand Prix here it looks like Danny Kvyat behind him might just be able to hang on ahead of Stroll and Esteban Ocon here but I say that look at the run Gasly's got through the twisty bits there. That Alpha Tower is still an absolute weapon through the corners here. And now with the DRS, is Gasly going to be able to have a look for something? Down in towards Ascari here. He's going to actually try and look for it. In towards Ascari there. Can we go late on the break? Let's try and get the switch back on him there. There's almost contact. with side by side through Ascari there. Oh, wheel to wheel contact between myself and Pierre Gasly. And now it's a drag race down in towards the final corner of the Grand Prix. We've just got enough momentum around the outside. Gasly can't keep the nose there, but that was almost game over for the pair of us. Round in the final corner. Again, he's going to get close, but we come through to win the Italian Grand Prix. Absolutely awesome. Just amazing. Well done. Here we are then, a thoroughly deserved win in Italy after another excellent Grand Prix. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Mr. Monaco takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Anthony Davidson, who do you pick? Well, you can't fault anything that Sergio Perez did out on the track today. He drove flawlessly, making him an easy pick. I know that's at odds with the official decision, but I think they deserve some recognition on a day where both of these drivers are at the top of their game. Let's move on to the constructors. The current championship leaders still hold top spot, but that gap is getting smaller. Meanwhile, Renault move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the Italian Grand Prix. And on paper, it might have looked like quite an easy one for us there. Pole position, 
fastest lap and race victory. But for those of you guys that stuck around and watched the entirety of that Grand Prix, you will know it was anything but... Yeah, at the end there. We do take the race victory with the full 26 points ahead of Pierre Gasly by just one-tenth of a second there. Danny Kvyat and Lance Stroll, P3 and P4, ahead of Esteban Ocon there. Giotto in P6 in his first home Grand Prix there. Not the best result, but not the worst either. Ahead of Perez. Our teammate Charles Leclerc, there, a disappointing end to the day for him, as well as George Russell, led for plenty of the race early on there. I think he actually had to have a front wing change uh, when he boxed for Ferrari. And unfortunately, a P9 at the end there is a hammer blow to his championship charge as well. The Almond down in 10th there. Our other title rival, Lewis Hamilton, down in P14. Not a weekend that he wants to remember either. Just never really had the pace. And you can see the rest of your finishers there. Guan Yu Zhou, the only man not to make it to the checkered flag, means for the first time this season, we officially lead... The Drivers' World Championship there. Things you love to see. 13 points clear of Danny Kvyat there. Just ahead of Pierre Gasly by just one point. Separating the pair of them at this stage of the year. If next race was the finale, it would still be a four-way shootout there. George Russell still 24 points back at this stage of the year there. Stroll 28 back. Hamilton 34 behind. And yeah, Charles Leclerc 58 back now. Very much looking like he's probably now out of this title battle as well there. Further down the order though, Perez gets the jump on Max Verstappen. Don't say that too often in Formula 1, despite those two being teammates now in real racing as well. There no other movers though, down towards the rear of the field. Yeah, just a lot of movements inside the top six. Uh, constructors wise though, 10 points Alpha Tari now behind Mercedes as we're just 41 back as well. There is all still to play for in the Constructors' Championship as well there. Renault rejump McLaren as well on 58 points as they're both trying to close in on Ferrari at this stage of the year. They're surely Ferrari are going to be able to hold on to at the very least P6 with George Russell at the helm at this stage of the year there. But four races to go of the My Team Career Mode. Thank you all so much for watching and we will be back next time out. I think... I think we head to Japan, but honestly, I can't remember for sure. We'll be back wherever we are, and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.